In this video, we are going to be making a calculator in Scratch. So it will look like this. We press the green flag, say that we want to find what is 4 plus 7. We find out that it is equal to 11. Okay. So first up, we'll be having to create this uh, background, which is simply that, uh, which you can customize. So I just put a black background and a white rectangle to display. After that, you have to create 10 number buttons from 0 to 9. And inside each number button, there should be some text saying which button it is. And I also will rename the buttons. After that, you also have to create the operation buttons, class times divide minus and equals. You can also customize them. And you also have to create a set text text. And here are the questions it should contain. It should contain the digits from 0 to 9, the four operations, class times minus divide, the equal sign, the dot, or the full stop, and the E. We'll be needing the dot in case uh, the operate in case the operation above is too big and so we'll have to truncate some of it and also in case the answer is a decimal and we'll be needing the e in case the uh, scratch is large numbers in using this format as you can see there's an e over here notice that uh, i've renamed all of the costumes to their respective uh, mm, uh, to the text inside and also for these operations. This will be important later. So now let's start off with the number buttons. For the number buttons, the code are quite simple. So when this bar is clicked, if the operation is equal to a blank which or nothing, then we set, okay, hold on a second. We'll have to create some variables. And now you can see the list of them. We do not need this one, apparently. Okay. So now you can see the list. There's PID, which is a clone ID. There's an index. There are the two numbers and operation, the previous string, and the result. Make sure that C, uh, the CID is only for this variable text which contains all the various letters. So you will have to select it to be for this part only. Now let's move on. So we'll be going to the code for the number variables first. So the code is simple. When this part is clicked, if the operation is blank, then that means that we're still including the first number. So we set it to join number one and costume name. Otherwise, we do it to number two because if the operation is not blank, then we are already starting to input the second number. And we will do the same for all the other numbers. So, for example, if I press the button, uh, if I show number one and I press, for example, if I show number one and I press the button three, then since the costume is named three, it, so it will set number one to join number one and three, for example. Okay, so now let's continue with the operations. So for each operation, we need to have when this bar is clicked, if not number one is blank and operation is blank, then we'll set the operation to the name of the costume, which happens to be the name of the sprite. So for example, uh, uh, so for example, if I enter in eight and then I enter in say and then I press plus, then the operation will be set to plus because number one is not empty and the operation is empty. If I press plus right away, on the other hand, then this does not hold. And so it will not set the operation. You have to enter the number before you enter the operation. Similarly, if I put seven times and I try to put plus, it will not work because the operation is not empty. There's already an operation. 
Now let's move on to the equal sign. So when the equal sign is clear, if not number two is blank, which means number two is already filled, then it will calculate. And so when, when it calculates it, so we'll have to be creating a message, broadcast, uh, broadcast, we have to create a new message and call it calculate. So when I receive calculate, which means that when, the, when this sprite receives this calculate, then if the operator is fast, it will set the result to their sum. If it's minus, it sets to their difference and so on. And also, we also have to do some code for the text. This one is the one with a lot of code. So when the green flag is clicked, it will erase all uh, because it uses the pen. So we'll have to add in the pen library. And we'll go to this position over here, which basically initializes the, uh, initializes. You might, so want to have your text go to, a, you might want to have this sprite go to a different position if you use a different layout. So, and we'll set CID to zero. So if CID is zero, then it will be a clone. Okay, actually we don't need this. If CID is zero, then it will be a clone. And if CID is one, then it means that it's the actual one. So forever it will hide because we don't want to see this. And after that, if not previous string equals to join join number one operation number two, which is a text that will appear up here, or number one is blank, uh, blank, as we can see over here. Oops. Then that means that uh, we need uh, we need to update the text. So we set previous string. Uh, we update this previous string. If its length is greater than twenty five, then we will need to use some dots because we will limit it to twenty five characters. So then it will broadcast display. Wait a tenth of a second. Set it as to 145, which is where the last digit will be. And switch costume to the last digit of the previous string. Set its clone ID to zero, create a clone, and set its clone ID back to one. Otherwise, it will just put in the next digit of the previous string, as you can see over here. And when I receive display over here, so when this text receives display, if it's up position is minus 170, it will delete the code. Why? Because minus 170 is this uh is this text over here. So if I go ahead and continue typing some things. So now notice that over here is an eight. When I type in a new key, the eight gets it disappears. And the eight happens to be at the x minus 170. So if the x position is minus 170, it deletes the clone. Otherwise, if it's smaller than 170, then it will set it to a dot, as we can see for, for these three dots. And otherwise, it will just move 15 to the left. And when it receives calculate, then if CID is one, because if CID is zero, then it's not a clone, and we want the non clones to stay up there. Then it will stop other scripts in Sprite. So uh, we, it won't continue on the other scripts. It will go to this position, which is down here, and it will hide. And it will switch the costume to the equal sign to put an equal sign. It will stand down the equal sign and move 15 to the right. Now you might need you might need uh, need to change this coordinate depending on uh, depending on how you lay out your calculator. So now it will wait a tenth of a second for your, the result, and it will set the index to one. And basically, it will iterate through all the characters of the result, and it will print them out. So for example. If I were to go ahead and put a wait one second over here and say one, two, three, four, oops, and say I want to find one, two, three, four, five divided by one, like this. 
So basically, it moves right, it stamps, it moves to the right, and it stamps, and like that. And if you want to, uh, if you want an effect, you can go ahead and put zero. So, for example, divide by one, like that. Which, if you are working with large numbers, might become more apparent as you can see but because this wait zero seconds actually waits for about one over 25 of a second but anyways we'll remove it now let's go to the stage so initially it'll set out the both numbers and the operation to a blank and forever it's going to set T operation. T operation is basically the operation that is testing to zero. So we may need this T operation. So we'll set it to zero. So for example, if you press then that way when you type in a zero, then it will be recorded that. So if T T operation is pressed, then if operation is equal uh, is blank, then it will set number one or number two accordingly and it'll wait until not this key is pressed so that way we won't end up with a string of digits and we'll change the operation by one so it'll iterate over all the digits from zero to nine and see if they are pressed now we set the, the operation to plus and we use a, essentially the same code as over here so if the key is pressed then we use this code and similarly we do it for all the other operations we did it twice for the multiplication because some people have to enter the multiplication sign this way. And after that, we also have to do the equal sign. And for the equal sign, you, you simply broadcast calculate. Also, to, for this key, we'll have to do key join operation and a blank over here. If this is pressed, then and not all this, then it will broadcast, uh, then it will do the same. Before you leave, please remember to smash the red subscribe button and the like button. Thanks for watching.